is it okay according to the Bible to smoke marijuana? Uh, no, it is not okay. And, uh, and here's why. <clears throat> In Revelation chapter 21, verse 6, Jesus says, It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He says, I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountains of the water of life freely. He that overcometh, that's those who stand with him to the end. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and the unbelieving, the abominable murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, you hear that word sorcerer right there? Sorcerers. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. If you look up that word sorcerer right there, your grandma's probably got a book called The Strong's Concordance. It's a, it's a concordance of every Hebrew and Greek word spoke. The, the New Testament was wrote in Greek. The Old Testament was wrote in Hebrew. You can look up every word in the Bible, and it'll tell you what the original Greek word is and what it means. And that word sorcerer in Revelation 21.8, it means a drug, a druggist, or a spell-giving potion. It's talking about a mind-alternating drug. When you do mind-alternating drugs, you're, you're changing the state of mind that God created you with to get some alternative mind and when you subdue your body to a certain extent rather getting drunk out of your mind you're no longer in control of your own body when you're smoking dope you're no longer in control of your body but the enemy the devil gets to possess you when you're not in control of your body Paul the Apostle once said we were once one with a prince of this world and we walked after his conversation you know that was someone who was now in Christ before we became in Christ before we surrendered to Jesus we were once one with the prince of this world. We walked there after his conversation. We walked after the things of the flesh, you know. And here's the thing, man. You can't smoke marijuana and serve Jesus Christ, man. And uh, Satan would get you to be bound on a dandelion if he could get you to be addicted mm -hmm. to it. If he could get you to be so in love with it that you're willing to be obsessed where that's the most important thing in your life. And, uh, man... Secondly, marijuana destroys your body. It destroys your brain cells, man. And uh, it's just a tool of Satan to keep you in darkness, really. But it, it destroys your brain cells, man. The moment you start smoking it and as soon as the THC hits your body, it starts mounting your brain cells. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and here's the thing. The Bible says, speaking of Christians, if you're really a Christian, if you're really a child of God, it says, uh, Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? And if any man defile that, that temple, him shall God destroy. You know, you want God to save you? You want God to destroy you? You know, one time Jesus knew that he was about to be crucified. He knew that he, that Judas had went to go betray him. And, uh, and he said to his disciples, he said, The prince of this world cometh, but he hath nothing in me. He knew that Satan was coming to try to kill him, okay? But he said, he has nothing in me. He didn't have any legal ground in his life, man. Does Satan got legal ground in your life? Go ahead and smoke pot. That leaves, mm -hmm. that leaves the enemy legal ground in your life. Go, go lust after some other woman that's not your wife. Go look at pornography, man. If you do, you're just opening up your body. And you're leaving, you're leaving Satan legal ground to possess you, to give you a spirit of lust, to, to dominate over your life, you know. Jesus said... For this one reason was the Son of God manifested that he would destroy the works of the devil. He wants to destroy the works of the devil in your heart, man. He can change your heart. He can he can create a clean heart in you. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. The old things have passed away. A new creation. Behold, all things have become new. And when you're in Jesus, man, you're a new creation. The old you's passed away. Everything's become new. And uh, you need to be born again, man. You need to ask Jesus to set you free from alcohol, drugs, whatever it is that's keeping you from him. And you need to say, Lord Jesus, I surrender all to you. You can't just quit all these things, man. You don't have the power. In John chapter 1, verse 12, it says that Jesus came unto his own. He came unto his own, but his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to those that believed on his name, which were born. Speaking of a second birth, not of the will of man, nor of flesh, nor of blood, but of God. Speaking of being born of God. When someone says, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Save me, Lord. Set me free. They literally become conceived of the Holy Spirit. They're no longer their own body now. They no longer possess rights to their own body. 
because the, bo the body we now live in, we're supposed to live dead to this world and all of our lust and all of our lustful thoughts. And we're supposed to live a alive in Christ, you know. And uh, Jesus came to set us free. He said, for this one reason was the Son of God manifested, that he would destroy the works of the devil. He also said, if the Son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. Man, if we say that we know him and we walk in darkness, God says in his word, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, then we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And his truth is not in us. But listen to this. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know what I'm fishing for today, man? You, man. You're the one I'm fishing for today.